Voices of the World brings you first-hand stories about the triumphs, tragedies, and turning points that shape human lives. Hello. Bonjour. Servus. Grüß euch. Swagat. Hasta la próxima. Now streaming, listen in to this true story. Hi everyone, my name is Anastasia Martinova. Thank you so much for inviting me to this wonderful podcast. And I would love to share my inspirational story about my own life, own experiences and challenges that I was going through as a child and as an, as a teenager and as an adult. So first, I just would love to introduce myself a little bit more just to share my background. I was born in Eastern Europe, and when I was born, I had a brain injury and a nervous disorder. So my body was not really fully coordinating or functioning as another human being would function. And it will be much harder for me to learn how to synchronize my left and right hemisphere and how to synchronize my upper body and my lower part of my body. And um, as a child, I would be suffering a lot from colds, um, having pneumonia quite often, and just feeling overall like as a child, just like fighting for life and just going through all those challenges and Believing that there is a hope that uh, one day all those challenges and one day they'll be gone. And that was kind of my inspiration just to keep living, keep breathing, keep moving. And I'm grateful to my family. I'm grateful for all my teachers and for all my therapists that were working with me when I was a kid. I did a yoga therapy when I was, since I was three years old and really, really helped me. It helped me to connect to deeper understanding of who I am. It helped me on a physical level to heal my body, not necessarily fully yet, but I'm still working towards healing um, or activating that self-healing mechanism from within, And but definitely helped me emotionally. It helped me to understand that our thoughts and our emotions, they plant the seed into our reality or if we stay in that sad and constantly just feeling upset and frustrated and angry at yourself that that's what is happening to you but it's not going to change the reality it's only would uh, make it worse so I, I understood the practice of yoga taught me that I no matter what I'm going through I should see the life from the positive perspective I shouldn't focus on limitations. I shouldn't focus on challenges. I should rather focus on strengths and all the opportunities and all the support that I have. And yoga changed my life since I was little. It gave me support, emotional, physical, mental. It helped me to create a deeper connection with my own self and my body, um, just to accept the body the way it is and to learn how I can find a gift behind what I'm dealing with uh, or physically challenged by. And that really put me on a journey of um, seeking what is there something that whatever you can believe in, God, universe, the higher powers, what is their purpose? So what is something that my body, my the higher, the higher powers trying to tell me with those conditions that I have? And to the environment that I was brought in, that when I was born, I had very, um, I guess, traumatic birth and it was a lot of complications. So I wanted to see from perspective, like what that experience is trying to teach me. And since early childhood, I was very already awakened and I was curious to know what is the purpose of life? And I would always ask my parents, like, mom and dad, what is the purpose of life? And they'll just simply reply to me. I was like, well, one day you'll be an adult, you'll have kids, you'll marry, and then you'll have grandkids. But that wasn't really satisfying answer for me. Every time when they would say that, I would be like very 
puzzle. I was like, in is that just that's all? It just doesn't sound right to me. And I was be I would be very discouraged to hear that answer. And I will be always seeking that there should be something else. There should be a deeper purpose, a deeper meaning from existence. It couldn't be just, you know, to have family and do the routine things and that's it. So that was now satisfying to me. The practice of yoga since childhood, it really opened up for me a doorway to see there's a beyond of what I can imagine. There's more, a deeper meaning for my existence. There's a deeper purpose why I'm here and why I do have those challenges. And when I changed that perception in my mind that it's not, just physical limitations. It's something beyond of what I could have imagined. And then when I changed my mind on my perception and my thoughts and my emotions towards my physical limitations, I start seeing that my physical eyes would see beyond of just physical world. As a kid, I would be playing with my friends on uh, the time machine game where I would send them into the future and I'll do them a reading about the future. And I'll be, um, they'll be my like favorite, favorite game that I will play or I'll send them to the past and I'll do for them a reading about the past. And that was my, the favorite activity or hobby that I was doing as a kid. I thought it was just in my imagination. And when I, when I would share with my parents, they'll just simply, you know, they'll, they'll just take that as like a little child sharing their dream or imagination. and. It was never supported or it was never, I guess, heard. And in that, it was never environment to help me, I guess, as a child to develop that ability from childhood. And I actually even forgot about that ability. So I lost it. And, um, but the yoga practice was still kind of helping me to go through my awakening process. And then uh, when I was a kid, I was sent to, uh, or my parents signed me up to play sports. I played professional tennis. I did professionally dance. I was performing on the stage since I was three. So I was put into all those different activities to overcome the self-limiting beliefs and emotional challenges as well, because I believe that I'm just not the same as everyone else not good enough. And um, when my parents signed me up for very competitive sports, I knew that was, it was hard to be the same or to compete on the same level with others. But I always would set for myself, like a, not expectations, but I'll set for myself like almost like a, a goal to achieve. And I know that despite of everything, I can just get up and I can do it. And that was my motivation. That was my encouragement, just to keep encouraging myself that I still can do it. And I eventually, I, I'm, I reached to the level where I was very good at all those arts that I practiced and I played for school, uh, receiving the medals for schools, I would, would perform on a stage. I will, we always would go to the competitions and I'll be on on the team. Um, also, I would perform by myself and always get the first prize. And I, to me, it would be always surprising. It's like, how's that possible? Like, I'm not the same, but I'm, I'm doing well. And, but that really, since childhood, has started helping me to rewire my own beliefs about who I am and what I can do. And I just wanted to all the guests to share the importance of our emotions, the importance of our thoughts, the importance about our beliefs, especially when something happens to us from early childhood or in our childhood. We create a reality or we create a mindset that that's only what could possibly happen or that's the only reality that we can exist so that we can live in. We start limiting our lives with those beliefs. And in my example, um, since I was having a hard time in my early childhood with my health, so I created for myself a belief that I am weak, I'm not strong enough, I'm not good enough, I cannot be like everyone else. And that belief was with me in in not only in my physical body, in the cellular level, but also in my emotional body, in my mental body. 
and everything what I wanted to achieve, my first thought would come in from my subconscious mind that it's not possible because you are not like everyone else. You would not be able to do it. And that thought was so powerful that would stop me from even doing it. And now as a conscious adult, when I work already in the field of being a yoga instructor and working as a therapist, I do see working with other clients, how our thoughts and emotions, they're so powerful that they change our reality. So definitely when I go back right now to my childhood experience, then I see why I was seeing or why I was living a certain way. But going back to the story of my early childhood, I became very successful in playing sports, being professional competitive dancer. I did so well in school, even though I never studied, but my brain, because I had a brain injury, it compensated. And I, since childhood, I had very good visual photographic memory. So I will constantly, when I read a book, I will almost like I take a picture of whatever I read and I just close the book and I go to sleep or I go to, to the playground. I'll never study But uh, when I come to the exam, I will connect to that memory from my subconscious mind. I pull that story or pull that picture out of my data bank. And then it's much easier for me to do well in exams and tests because all information is there. And I graduated when I was 14 from high school because I did some of the classes in one year. And that really allowed me to have an opportunity to come to United States from Eastern Europe because by graduating in from high school when I was 14, there was nothing really for me to do there. So I came to United States and I went to senior year in, in uh, Texas area, close to Dallas. And I did well in school there as well. Um, I had a lot of A um, A grades and English at that time when I came to United States, I did not know English at all. So that was like an exchange program where I came and I did not know English yet. And I was practicing, but it was really hard when I would want to communicate with people. I want to express myself, but then I can because no one understands another language. And that was really emotionally hard for me and felt very isolating, felt that I just don't belong to this community. So it was a lot of like just emotional challenges. But again, my childhood experience reminded me no matter what, just stay strong and you can do it. And right after three months, I was just keep persistently studying, learning, listening, just keep exposing myself to culture, to events, to being in school and just keep trying my best. And after three months, I finally, I could start expressing myself, maybe not necessarily fluently or grammatically correct, but I was able to communicate to what I really wanted to say to others. And that's where my journey started uh, of more deeper awakening here in the United States when I came and I was on my own. I felt that it was like an extra step towards my deeper awakening because there's no other support. There's no parents. You feel like you are now should stand up and be responsible for yourself to be independent. And at the same time, always standing up for yourself if there's something, um, if you feel that it's something is there and doesn't feel comfortable. So there was always like a, the moments when I felt like, well, I just, I wanted to be surrounded by my family members, but then I knew that being away would really help me to grow stronger and will help my spirit to embody even stronger into my body so I can be more powerful. And um, after graduating from high school, I went straight to college. I applied to George Washington University, to American University. And 
my dream was to go to George Washington University because they had three degrees that I wanted to study. I really wanted to study the hospitality, sport event, hospitality management. I wanted to study um, business administration and finance, and I wanted to study nutrition. But coming from Eastern Europe, knowing that our currency value is totally not matching with the dollar value. So I was very upset that, and I did not believe in miracles, but then I deeply trusted. I was like, I know that if that really meant it's going to happen, um, I had the deep trust, believe, believe in whatever you can believe, like higher powers, God, universe. But I knew that if that's the purpose, if that's the place that I where I should be, I know something just like a miracle will happen. And I applied and I sent out my application and I even forgot about it. And it was already August. I was still waiting on the applic, like if there's any reply, checking my mailbox, but nothing is coming. And I got already upset and worrying. And I felt like kind of that state of giving up. I felt like, well, I guess that's not my calling. That's not where I should be. I felt very uncertain. I felt very confused, very upset at myself. But then all of a sudden, last minute, the mail got lost and they send the application. I mean, they accept the send up acceptance letter already several months ago. But something my parents, they encouraged me. It's like, why don't you call to school and check on your application? And I called them and they they told me that they send up acceptance letter a long time ago so I was like I was very excited and I was very grateful I didn't know what to expect but when I came to admissions office they um, gave me my acceptance letter in support of uh, financial support and here's like where that just my spirit and my soul is just melted I was like I knew like I do believe and I do trust that there's a purpose for everything and for everyone. And um, our mind, our thoughts are so powerful too. We are, in a way, our own creators of our own reality. Whatever we believe in, we manifest. If we believe that we don't deserve and we can't do it, and if only a little bit of that, even that little spark or that energy will be sent or directed towards that thought, then we manifest that to fail things or to not to um, get acceptance or not to to do what we really desire to do. So definitely I throughout my life, life taught me that our thoughts are so powerful. Whatever we believe in, that's what we manifest, that's what we create. If we believe that we are weak, we will become weak because we are already setting that environment for our own weakness. We are setting the program for our body and telling to all the cells, which is we have millions and billions of cells in our body. So we're telling to our cells that you should be weak. And the cells that do believe to that consciousness that you, we use and we speak on this planet through the language of thoughts, language of emotions, language of feelings. And if those feelings and thoughts and emotions are powerful at that moment, and that's where you direct the energy towards that specific thought or that emotion, it's going to manifest. So that definitely taught me in my life that be careful what you wish for. Be careful what you believe in. Be careful what you say. Because all of those uh, energies even though we don't see it, but we already put it out there into the uh, intelligence field, into the universe for the manifestation. And it's always heard, since we live in a linear time, it doesn't mean that it's going to happen overnight. It might, but um, since we live in that linear time, it takes a little longer to manifest things. It takes a little longer to, for that specific divine timing to come into your life. And that's where the lessons of patience comes in. It's not easy on this planet to leave um, life and not to expect something to happen right away because the patience is just, you always feel like impatient. You wanted that to happen right away. And it's explainable because on all other dimensions, everything happens much faster. Everything moves with the speed of light and 
it's much more easier and faster to create things. You create things with your thoughts and even your movements, with the frequencies. But here on this dimension, it's a third dimension. Everything is more dense. Everything takes time. Even taking an example, like when we're flying to another country, it takes time to fly to another country. But in other spaces, in other dimensions, when we fly, it takes maybe like, seconds and milliseconds it, maybe it's not even in our linear time when we cannot even measure uh, how fast it is um, so that's why it's really it taught me a lesson that patience uh, taught me a lesson of trust uh, taught me a lesson of uh, believing in yourself and and definitely that our emotions and thoughts uh, and feelings are so powerful and going back to the journey and here I am at uh, George Washington University. I really loved that school because it was very multicultural. There was a lot of cultures that I met, people from China, from Vietnam, from India, Sri Lanka, from Arabic countries, from different islands. Um, it was very multicultural from Europe. And I was just grateful for that experience to meet I could never imagine in my life that I could experience all different cultures. I can meet, I can share with them my precious time, I can socialize, I can talk and learn from them about their culture, their foods. And that's really inspired me to to be around those people. And um, most of my friends, all of my friends, they were very multicultural. And I was just very grateful um, for that experience that George Washington University offered to me, not only educational, but also cultural experience. And right after when I graduated from George Washington, I worked for budget office in George Washington. And then I uh, applied for another job and I got a job in the nonprofit world and working there, but I was start realizing that my heart is calling me um, to serve kids, to work with kids, to work with spo- uh, special needs population. And it's interesting when we don't move in life, when we create that stagnant energy, our bodies start uh, almost like pushing us to, for that change to happen. I was very young at that moment in my 20s, but I was very, very sick. My body was just going into that internal conflict with my, maybe it's an ego, maybe it's just my mind of feeling secure, feeling financially secure, feeling like, oh, well, that's just, you know, the perfect place. I know that there's always consistency. So there was definitely a fear of change. And it was so powerful that I would always find a uh, reason why not to have that change. It would say, well, that's impossible. You already worked in the field for over seven years. How would you change right now? How would you move to another field and start over again? You put so much investment in time and money into getting your degree. And now like you want to work with kids, which is totally different. And... At that moment, it was just, I felt like there was two Anastasias at that moment. My mind would say one thing. My heart would keep telling me, but we got to move. We got to change. And then my body would be just so ill. Um, I couldn't breathe. I went to doctors for checking for asthma. I went to doctors about for digestive issues. But they couldn't find anything. They couldn't even explain why I'm having such uh, symptoms. It was kind of like an allergy, but more like where to the point where I couldn't even sleep at night. And if I want to sleep, I'll sleep on the side and I'll always cough and I'll use different medications. And um, doctors already prescribed me to use a steroids, which I was very not, uh, didn't want to use. And and then my body, like my lower back started hurting, my shoulders start hurting, my, I couldn't move my wrist, I couldn't type because uh, my work was really, really stationary. I was sitting at the desk and looking at the computer, doing a lot of financial and accounting work. There was a lot of stress, but still a lot of uh, computer work. But that experience helped me to understand, it helped me to understand who I am. 
I understood that I love community. I love working with people. I love to be around people. And that specific environment was not meant met for me, uh, meant for me because I was sitting by myself in a cubicle and the only what I would do is just to keep looking at the computer and keep just uh, kind of almost talking to computer every day. There was no one else to talk with. And it was really, really hurting my like internal self because I love working with people. I love sharing and learning and growing in the community. And um, then I started realizing what are my values in life. I started realizing and writing down What's something, what I want to see in my life, what kind of change. The moment I start writing poems, I start working again towards my self-realization. I, um, while I was working at the other job, I was getting my certification in yoga. I started getting my certification become to become a kid's yoga instructor, to become a yoga instructor for special needs, to become a yoga instructor for post-traumatic traumas and experiences so I started diving into instead of seeing again that what I'm going through right now as a negative I I changed my mindset I was like why don't I like see what's something that's positive out there what is something that really that experience is trying to teach me what is there a deeper meaning what is trying to tell me that experience and instead of just dropping everything and quitting and um, just going downhill with a negative attitude and just giving up on life and giving up on everything what I, where I am at the moment, I realized that I could see that experience from the positive perspective. And I can use that time for creating a new platform, a new, for that change to happen. And that's what my, uh, those several months where I was just working deeply, I would do, I will do a lot of readings, a lot of writings. I wrote a book during that time. I've wrote a lot of poems. I would write a lot of meditations um, while I would be on the train to go to DC. I will do a lot of transcendental meditation where I'll go into the trance and I'll start doing a channeling work. I would start down, receiving downloads and visions, and, and it was really profound experience. But uh, going back to my, um, I guess the human mind, I was definitely felt like, okay, I'm secure there at that job. I should just stay there. But my other, my spiritual self was just keep creating that environment, just keep moving through life and allowing that flow and just going with the flow. And here again, I got into that clash of the two sides of me, the one that is human side, the human mind, and the spiritual mind, where two of them came into that almost a war. And one of them didn't want to move, another one want to move. And here's the body and the body, the one who gets all the pain and suffering and hurt because two of them they don't go on compromise. Compromise. They don't. They don't want to be in harmony. They don't want to live in balance. And he, that's where the higher powers are working already. And I start feeling a lot of change start happening in our organization where I used to work. Um, all of a sudden, wonderful supervisor that hired me a long time ago. She decided to go on retirement and. And here's the new changes coming and that those changes with a new um, management. It was just a lot of changes where I felt very overwhelmed. And it was a one night when I was coming back from Washington, D.C., driving back in my car. And that moment, my car was a two-wheel drive. And I was coming back all of a sudden, I think it was like around November or December. No one predicted about the snow. There was no plow trucks. The salt wasn't there and I was coming back from work late at night. And uh, when I was coming back, the snow started falling and I didn't expect it's going to be like so fast. It will accumulate and it was accumulating faster and faster. And it got to the point where all the cars were driving like five miles per hour. The highway where I live, the Route 66, when you take that, there's a curvy 
place and there's like a going up the hill kind of a pl- place where your car needs to go up the hill and all of a sudden my car instead of going up the hill and then that kind of taking that curve it starts spinning and that was for me like a breaking point in day i was just terrified I, w- i felt really off control um i was trying to control the wheel so hard but the weight of the car was just massive and it was just overpowering that just i couldn't even control and the car was just spinning and spinning and spinning and like my brain and i think my nervous system went into the shock where I just i just completely gave up and just let my hands off the wheel and and i asked angels i was like whatever like you know just i'm just asking for protection but i know that you're here and you're going to help me somehow the cars were reacting fast and they moved to the sides when i was spinning um so the, the accident did not happen but it was just more like just nervous i guess shock to my mind that it is possible like in a way like i'm not always in control of my life I feel like there's a higher powers always out there watch like helping us but always they are kind of almost like just checking in with you if you are on the right track if you are following your purpose and your mission and if you are not they use all their tools to guide you back on your right path and in that moment I I just I realized I just let my hands down and I said okay I'm ready to move it's time because i know that i cannot fight with that anymore and um i just i can't go against the flow because i know that i i'll just hurt myself and and as a child i always um would receive like a message from um whatever the voice will come into to me that would say that if i'm not following my purpose if i'm not following my mission in life that that life will be just taking the seconds because there's no any other purpose for my existence. I'm not here for human flesh, I'm not here for pleasure, so I'm not here for just living the life, but I'm here to to almost serve and to fulfill what I created for myself or what I chose to um assist um this planet during this wonderful transition time of the deep awakening and um in that moment i um going back to the story when the car stopped spinning i was just sitting and i knew that i was really cold it was cold outside i knew i was really hungry i knew i was very tired but i here's like that second chance that second hope came back to me and i just send a like a prayer or saying or oh, deep trust saying please send me an angel to help me to get back to home because i'm very tired i really want to go to rest and all of a the sudden there um all the people were just uh when i stopped spinning they were just passing by and passing by and passing by i felt very alone i felt neglected i felt that i'm just not important or like everyone else just cares about their own lives but when i send that prayer out Uh all of a sudden there's a person that stopped on a big truck like a pickup truck and he just waved to me and I felt like that was a sign and he kind of started making the tracks with his wheels um and then he followed uh or he was driving in front and I was following him all the way to the house which is to me that was a blessing that the person was just with open heart without his ego his selfish his selfish needs he was open there to help and assist and from that moment which i made a promise to myself to my spiritual self that this is a time for a change and i knew that now i cannot back up i cannot just sit in that place even though there was no clarity how i'm going to make that transition smoothly from um having a full-time job to having no job and being able to support myself and knowing that I have no family in this country knowing that I don't really kind of don't fully belong to here because I have no support of family or grandparents or like someone to stay with even at the house and so knowing that I need to support myself for my shelter for the food for all the necessary needs and despite of all those doubts that i had even after that incident i still deeply believe that everything going to work out and 
um, I just came um, to work uh, probably several months after and I put the resignation letter and I said, I just want to resign. And everyone was very, very surprised why I'm resigning because I was a really good employee. I, I did a great job. and But it was just a time for me to start, to start my um, journey. I was deeply grateful for that experience, but I knew that I am on the right track. As soon as I um, put my resignation letter, I applied for several jobs. I knew that I want to work with kids. And when I applied for a job, then um, I received immediately some of the interviews, offerings, and I went to the one that I felt resonated. And when I came, the principal or director of that school, it's a preschool, she commented, it's like, wow, you have such a blue aura. You, the kids really need you here. And that was really inspirational to me. And I definitely, I accepted that offer and I went to my deep awakening of that inner child because my inner child felt hurt, felt not deserved. It, it still needed healing from my childhood experience. And working with kids, they really helped me to get on a deeper level of that authentic self to get out of the, all those mind, mindset of um, not loving myself, not accepting myself, of feeling constricted and restricted to express myself. I felt so free with them. I felt so in an environment where there's no judgment, there's deep acceptance, deep love. Every day I would receive hugs and compliments and all the kids would always want to like, play and talk with me and learn from me and learn together they just felt very drawn drawn towards me and I really appreciated that experience of being there and it guided me to open up um, a nonprofit for kids that serves kids and, and also the individuals with special needs and that nonprofit the goal of that nonprofit was and is to um, help them to awaken their gifts and talents, to remind them that every one of us, we are talented, we are gifted. And we started teaching yoga and mindfulness through nonprofit at many schools in Fairfax County. I became involved with the therapeutical department of Fairfax County, teaching yoga for special needs. I... Um, I always wanted to do a talent show for special needs because I always myself participated in talent show and I loved it. So I had that idea in my mind and again, my human mind started creating reasoning why I cannot do because there's a, you need finances, you need to do this, this, this. And, but my spiritual mind, my spiritual self was saying, yes, you can do it. And as soon as I opened up my my heart all the opportunities came all the support came and that's when we begin offering and organizing our annual talent show for special needs community uh, which to me it's uh, really inspiring to see that they are out there on the stage and despite of what challenges they're going through they're believing that they deserve they are important they are heard they are part of the community and already transitioning out of preschool, I became more involved with nonprofit. And uh, we started doing a lot of events. One of the big events was Health and Wellness Expo. Uh, we also did a spring ball for special needs. We did um, another wellness event for Zumba and dance. We'll organize a Christmas big celebrations for community. So we'll be always doing a lot of events for community and bringing people from all walks of lives where they come and meet and network and have a great time and celebrate themselves and others. And um, while working on that project with nonprofit, I would never, I guess, I long time ago, because working with nonprofit will serve so many schools at that time, and 
it will require driving to Loudoun County, to Fairfax County, and then to Alexandria. I will feel very overwhelmed with driving. And one day, I was sitting in a car and I thought, I wish one day I'll have a place where people come to me instead of me going to schools. And when I said that, I really had from my heart like a deep need or like deep wish for that. I was really emotionally there when I said that. And the power of that thought was so powerful because when we think about something and if you just think, it has lesser, uh, less power than when you think and you really emotionally connect to that thought through your emotions. If you connect negatively, that thought still would have emotion in a way like if you think like uh, something negative, then it will still happen because that emotion was so powerful. But if you, whatever you wish for, you think with the positive thought or the positive feeling or emotion, that thought, which is energy, just right now already been charged to send out to intelligence field to connect to all other possible parties and people and energies and opportunities that aligns in synchronicity with that need or with that wish or with that thought. And all of a sudden, I just, I even forgot about it and I just let it go. I would never even ask for it. I would never like, I guess, put enough effort to even do this. But I will kind of keep constantly keep talking about it and thinking about it in a way we had space in Oakton, which we cannot really use it during the daytime. And, and I know that I wanted to have classes during the daytime as well. And I will think like, well, I wish maybe we'll have a place where we can all the time use the space, but I, I would never really attach to that thought or attach to that need or to that wish. So it's what I understood is really important. Whatever you're wishing for in life, whatever you trying to accomplish in your life, you put it out there to the universe and charge it with emotions, charge it with energy, charge it with feelings and really feel it in your body, really visualize and imagine how you want that to happen what you want but don't really attach yourself to that wish to that need to that thought and allow whatever you believe in the universe god or higher powers allow that to manifest if that's really meant for you to have or to experience and but don't limit yourself. Don't really go into every little detail. It's like, oh, well, that's how it's going to look because you never know. Sometimes our mind thinks small. We limit ourselves like, oh, I only deserve this. But the higher powers in the universe prepared something much more bigger for you, something totally different, what you could have imagined. And that's where the studio, um, the Yoga Toka studio came into the place, which it became my passion and my work serving community here in Alexandria. What something as a highlight, interesting, what I observed while I was driving a long time ago, your you know, spiritual self already knows everything about the future. It would point to places, to people, you'll connect you to people, but you never even realize that's where you will end up. When I'll pass the Alexandria, Virginia, I would even have like kind of like a negative reaction. I, I never, living in metropolitan area for 16 years, I would never come to Alexandria. I would never sp spend a time. I'll never even come here to, to visit parks. I love hiking. I love parks. I love community. I love like new places to explore. But I never would come here. I will be very resistant. But the most interesting that then the higher powers or your spiritual self puts you in a place to whatever you resist. So that's also a lesson for me. So don't resist things because you still will need to learn lessons um, and it will still bring you to that place. It will still bring you to the people that you need to connect. You need to, to evolve or to learn certain experience or lesson in that specific place or with that specific person. And 
when studio came into my place, it really brought me a lot of deep healing, a lot of even much more deeper self-realization of who I am, why I am here, what I'm doing on this planet. It helped me to um, polish my, or awaken, or to remember as a, when I was a kid, I would play a time machine. And now uh, I do, as a therapist, as a clinical therapist, I offer past life regressions. I offer hypnotherapy. I do Reiki, energy healing, reflexology, and healing touch. So it really helped me to awaken that as a child, I already knew that I, that's what I will be doing. That's what my drive and my passion, my skill. And that's all start unfolding perfectly of deeper understanding. And that's the reason why I'm having, or I had a brain injury that affected certain parts of the brain, that my vision was not perfect to see physical because I never saw physical reality as a kid, I always would see spiritual or the past or the future, but I forgot. And while already running a studio and going through that spiritual awakening and deeper awakening and deeper healing of my own self and my own past lives, um, before I became a, um, the therapist, I always was seeking because I was stuck in that mindset. I got to heal myself because Everyone else is different. I got to be like everyone else. Um, but when I was a kid, my parents offered me to do a surgery, but it requires to do two surgeries every two years. And um, they said it's not guaranteed that I would help the brain and it might affect completely the vision, which is a complete loss of vision. And as a child, I said, I'd rather not to do that because it will change my energy field and I will never be able to discover why I am here and what is this health challenge or what is this experience trying to teach me and I was kind of stuck in that mindset because I experienced as a child as a teenager a lot of like not being uh, feelings of not being fully accepted being judged um at that time when I was growing up, there was no much disability awareness. So there was people would just treat me not equally, not the same. I felt discouraged. I felt I just, I would always like learn that uh, I'll smile in front of them, but I'll come home and I'll just cry. I'll just isolate myself. I would never wanted to be around people. I felt like I just want to be a monk or like I want to, I, I, I will say it monk, but like I guess the, the right term say none maybe from the past lives I keep remembering, but I, I felt like I just want to like, you know, I just want to serve the higher purpose. I don't want to be involved into being like, you know, as everyone else. But that was a, a thought that was just deeply coming from that environment that I was growing up in, but it definitely did not serve a purpose. It even was putting me into that space where I would forget even deeper about who I am and why I'm here. But studio really helped me to bring that deeper awakening and understanding. And when I start my deeper self-healing and seeing other healers and learning from them and uh, start understanding that it's not about physical flesh, it's not about how our bodies look like, it's much more deeper than what we perceive with our physical eyes. And I was very... Uh, interested to try uh, hypnotherapy and past life regression. And when I tried, it was really a profound experience. I just did several sessions with different therapists and it was just every time when I do it, it was even deeper and deeper understanding. And, um, and what I understood that I had so many lifetimes on this planet and so many memories that they are stored in my body. They are stored in a cellular memory, cellular memory in muscles and tissues and bones. And the subconscious mind is like a data, data, data bank that stores that information. And everything what I experience now, it's an imprint of the past. Even the disability, even the physical challenges of my vision, even 
the brain injury and all the emotional challenges, they are my imprint of the past that I been carrying with me as a baggage and but I forgot and it was almost when we come here that memory of the past is erased. So then we wouldn't be overwhelmed with that history. But it's still in our bodies. It's deeply rooted into our core of our existence. And and when I start doing my own self-healing, I learn how to do my self-hypnosis after um receiving i think i received at least like seven sessions because i was very curious about why it's happening what is happening and i was curious about what is that multidimensional existence because it's not only past life when i was doing my sessions i start retrieving data that it's not only existence on this planet but it's also existence on other planets and stars and other dimensions they precondition my existence of my consciousness here on this planet as well and it really inspired me right now to start writing it and creating a script for a movie that I wanted to put into production and it really inspired me to see on much more um with my open mind that if you are multidimensional beings we don't just exist here on this planet we exist in so many other dimensions and but our brain picks up the signal or the frequency and our eyes pick up that light and then converts into the pictures and that programming of the human mind and human body is so strong and we strongly believe in that programming that we think that this is the only reality that we exist in this is the only place where we are at this moment right now but the more and more I do the trans work and channeling and the more I do my self transcendental meditations and especially if I do um, them in a group or for clients, it becomes more profound, deeper understanding of the creation of this universe, of the galaxy, of the creation of other universes and galaxies and understanding of deeper meaning of the whole creation of that intelligence field and how all those codes and algorithms that play a big important role in our lives and um and i'm just so grateful to my life and that journey of not living in ignorance and but living in that deep awakening that deep hope and trust that there is a meaning there is a reason there is a purpose for everything for every person that we meet in this lifetime has a deeper meaning it's not just coincidence that we we meet certain spirits there's seven billion i think seven billions i can't remember how many people on this planet but there's a lot of people on this planet and it's not a coincidence that you meet with that specific spirit right now at this time at this place there is a purpose there's a meaning there is something there's a message from that person What I understood from my life, we're always serving as a teacher and as a student at the same time. And the greatest teacher that we have in our life is ourselves. If we are open to that learning, if we are open to explore, and when we open our hearts and open our mind, because our mind on this dimension is just so logical. It wants clarity. It wants explanations. It wants the statistical proofs. And it's just so deeply into the core of like deep belief that it's blocking us to be open to that deep learning and that deep awakening to our other our other side of ourselves, to our other spiritual self. And the practice and the journey on this planet, it became to me, it's not about the job. It's not about the service that I do it's not about it became to me a journey that is continuous and I'm still writing I'm still almost like a reading this journey or reading a book of life of my existence on this planet and beyond and the way how I keep altering and changing that existence through my thoughts emotions my words my actions my feelings And it's so important every moment, it's not just a moment, it's not a second, a day, or a year. 
the more I expose myself to that deeper learning, I start realizing that time does not exist, that I don't even know what day right now or what months or year, because I feel like everything is continuous. Everything exists at the same time. It's, it's never ending. Um, there's, there's no beginning and there's no end just change forms, we change realities. And as a regular person would say, there's a time for everyone to die. To me, we never die, we change forms, we change realities. And if we are conscious enough, if we, and if we know how to control our bodies, our mind, and if we choose so, we actually can terminate the contract on this planet and we can change to another form. We can go to another reality. But in every dimension, follows the laws of the universe and this universe and this dimension is very strict whatever we create as some cultures they call it karma whatever we create ourselves we will still need to resolve that karma we'll need to resolve and complete those lessons complete those experiences we cannot change the form we cannot easily just withdraw ourselves from this reality until we complete those lessons and we we will come to the moments like "Uh aha that's what really that lesson and that experience really meant when we come to that deeper understanding and and seeing the life as a big picture that it's not just a glimpse that it's not just you the selfish ego exists here on this planet we exist all in this world together, every one of us, we have the imprint on each other. Whatever we say, whatever we do, we put into that human consciousness, we put that imprint, we leave that code, we, we put that thought, that energy already into that human collective consciousness and we keep creating together. We're not only creating our own life journey on this planet and keep learning and growing from that journey, but we creating our collective journey, our collective consciousness. That's why it's so important that every time when you even walk, the way you walk on this planet creates the frequency, creates the energy, creates the melody. And if you walk, if you step on this earth and your body experiences the feeling of anger or the sorrow, the sadness, your body is emanating that frequency. Your body is putting out there already into the environment that frequency. And if another person experiencing the same anger, the same sorrow and sadness, we intensifying that frequency. And if all of a sudden in, in the news, something sad uh, happened or they're saying that something is sad is happening somewhere and everyone is watching TV at the same time, and we're all experiencing that sadness and sorrow at the same time as anchor. We're just intensifying to the level that that energy is so powerful. It can serve either as a destructive force or it can be served as a powerful healing and loving force. So that's why it's so important as a collective consciousness to be aware of what you create as a creator uh, on this planet and beyond, what what kind of thoughts, what kind of emotions do you create every day? What kind of frequencies and, and, and energies you put out there into the universe, into this world? And the most important is to remember that whatever you put out out there into the universe, by the law of reflection, it reflects back to you. You receive it back in the same intensity that you put out there into the universe, into the world. If you feel, um, if you put and project the thought, that thought towards a person as a hate thought, that thought and that energy comes back to you as powerful as you put it out there towards that person, maybe unconsciously, but it comes back to you as a force and causing a destruction to your body, to your life, to your journey. It start uh, fragmenting you into pieces, and that's how that become more attached to this world. When our soul fragments into the pieces, when we, for example, create anger, and we start putting that anger out in the in the world, we fragmenting ourselves into, we sending out those energies, we leave those imprints on the planet, and we give a birth to that energy. The next person that comes into the life or the tree or animal picks up that energy 
and lived right now with that anger. So you already, by that energetic connection, you already attaching yourself deeply to the roots of this planet. And if your goal is evolution and awakening, the more we purify ourselves, the more we become lighter, we become less attached to this world. And the deep awakening and that purification process starts from you. And when every one of us, when we work on that awakening journey, on that purification journey, we help the human consciousness, collective consciousness to become lighter. We experience less of suffering and pain and diseases and illnesses on this planet. We start creating an environment that is more peaceful and loving for our future generation. And if you're asking a question to yourself, why we still have that suffering? Why do we have diseases and illnesses on this planet? Then there's a question to yourself, have you start your journey? Have you start your self-purification, your self-awakening journey? Or are you still waiting on someone to come and save you? Are you still waiting on someone to come and do the change for you? The change starts from your own journey, from you. And if you remember that and share that with others, that will bring a big, big change on this planet. And hopefully one day our kids, when they come to this world, they're not going to experience pain. And they will never even know what pain and suffering and disasters and what wars, what it really means, because that will be deleted from programming of our conscious mind. That will be erased and seized and forgotten for ages. And maybe we'll never even come back until someone will plant with a thought, will plant that again with a thought and with a mind, with emotions back into this reality. And, and that's just my journey on this planet. And I, and it's still evolving, it's still growing. And I'm open to a deeper healing, a deeper awakening, a deeper self realization by seeing my future, what is coming next. I'm very grateful for all the people who are in my life right now and guiding me and here in my journey and that I had a chance to learn from them and meet them and and to share my my love and my happiness and joy with them and my experience and and I'm grateful for um, allowing me to be there in their lives and also allowing and I'm grateful that they're keep bringing me that awakening by with their light they helping me to see my shadows they're helping me instead of ignoring them and escaping and saying i am perfect i know there's no perfection if we exist on this third dimension there's no perfection there's so much room for growth and evolution and learning there's so much infinite that i would love to learn but then my time is limit lim, it is limitless but some is still, I do uh, limit myself because I do want to explore other dimensions as well. But in a sense, it is limitless. There's no limitations. We choose, we make decisions how much we want to spend time on certain lessons and experience. And if you choose so, it can be in a second. It could be in a year, in a month, in a week. It could be all your lifetimes, all your lessons and experience. It could be they all already been learned and put a check mark and saying, I'm ready for something else. I'm ready for new opportunities, for new experiences to come into my life. But it's all up to you. You are your own creator. You create your own life. So be courageous to claim those powers, to become again that creator that Believe in yourself, believe and trust that you, the one who make your reality, who choose the path that you want to go, there is a higher purpose that comes from you, from that higher consciousness, from your higher self. But as you existing here, you still have a choice. If you want to spend a little bit more time and spend the whole life and whole lifetime to learn about the lesson of anger, it's up to you. Um, Or if you choose so that you want to spend only a day, a second, a year, or months, a week, to 
to learn about anger and really come at peace and neutralize that energy and see that from the higher perspective and to see that that energy of anger really, really has a deeper meaning to me. Maybe that's what I needed to learn and that's what I wanted to learn. But now it's time to evolve and come at peace with that emotion. So th- which is every emotion, energy and motion. Maybe now I'm open to receive the flow and abundance of other emotions and other energies in my life. And that's how I start seeing my life that it's all up to you. How you can see your life and what something that you choose uh, to do in your life. And there's no right or wrong. There's no doubt or feeling that I'm worse. I'm not at the level with somewhere else. That thought is really comes from our uh, selfish thought, from ego, judgmental part of us. And as soon as that thought comes into your mind, go back to your true essence. Remember who you are. Remember that you are that powerful being, that you are the unconditional love, that you are pure energy and nothing else matters. That's how my journey is still evolving, still growing. And I'm encouraging every one of you, all your li- all the listeners to f- discover who you are, to find your true essence and keep refining, keep purifying. To me, uh, self-reflection, journaling, meditation, yoga, tai chi, energy work, serving community, if um, someone asks me for help and going there and uh, helping them, it always helps me. It always brings me enlightenment. It always helps me to evolve and grow. Finding what works better for you. Maybe it's walking in the nature, connecting to nature. Finding maybe for you the tools that art. Maybe it's um, doing medical work maybe it's in the business world and creating opportunities for others maybe it's a lawyer being a lawyer it does not mean that all of us we do need to do spiritual healing we need to do yoga we need to do tai chi or energy work or we need to be all serving community that's not the goal, that's not the purpose to become like someone else. I encourage everyone to find your path, to find your calling, to find what your heart really feel connected and resonated to. It's not about being like someone else and there's no one path is better than other. There's no one person is better than other. We're all here in that journey together and I wish and I'm Excited to hear about your journey soon and hopefully we'll hear you about you and your experience and your life journey on this podcast very soon and perhaps not soon, but somewhere down there in the future. And I'm looking forward to hear you, your voice, and it's important to be heard and to hear yourself, to hear your heart what your heart desires. And I'm grateful for organizers of this podcast for giving me opportunity to share my journey. And I'm grateful for their strength and courage to to come to this world and to uh, share what everyone's story is about with others and to allow them to be heard and not to feel judged and not to feel accepted and um, just remember that your journey is unique and just let yourself express your authentic self without doubt because you are powerful, you are wonderful, you're strong and you are here for a reason. Let that voice, your voice guide you, let your heart guide you on your path and thank you again and hopefully we'll see you soon and have a wonderful day to everyone. Alvida. Hasta la próxima. Voices of the World is produced by iUSA Radio and Podtex.
a team that helps you to build a community podcast station and stream the truth about your city. To learn more and start building your own podcast business, go to www.streamthetruth.com.